Hi everyone, it's Natalie, and tonight I'm going to be coloring this picture of a gorilla that I drew ahead of time. Uh, as always, I'm using Strathmore toned gray paper. The cover of it looks like this in case you're interested in buying it. I highly recommend this paper to anyone who likes drawing. It's something that's a lot different than the traditional white printer paper or just white colored paper. It's something that's different and it's really unique, and if you haven't tried it, I highly recommend that you do. And for my coloring materials, I use Prismacolor colored pencils. These you can purchase at Hobby Lobby, Michaels, and on Amazon. Uh, just know that if you go to Hobby Lobby or Michaels, always look online for a 40% off coupon and you can save a lot of money that way. And I'll also be using white acrylic paint. This is white Americana acrylic paint. Uh, it's really cheap. It was like a dollar at Hobby Lobby. Uh, I think they also had a sale where it was like 30 cents off or something, but uh, I'm using the white paint for reflections on the eyes. I do this in a lot of my videos. Uh, for reflections, you don't really need that high quality of white paint. I just That's why I just purchased a $1 acrylic paint. So let's begin. I'm going to start with the eyes of the gorilla because like, everything I draw, I always start with the eyes just because uh, eyes are a lot of fun to color and it's something that can instantly make a piece just pop out and by doing the eyes first it kind of draws you in and makes you want to work on it some more. Oh, and by the way guys, in the description of this video, I put a link to some peacock coloring pages that I created for you guys. It's based off of the peacock drawing that I made, uh, I forgot how many nights ago, but I think it was before I left on my Colorado trip, so it's somewhat old, but I'm pretty sure that if you go to the videos tab on Quirky Mama's page and scroll down until you find Drawing with Natalie, you can look for the peacock video. But anyways, the, there's a link in the video's description for peacock coloring pages. And uh, it's based entirely off of the peacock drawing I did, so you can follow along with the live video that I made if you want, or you can just color it to your own, to your own colors and just for fun. But there's lots more coloring pages as well, so if you look around on that website, you'll be able to find them. Uh, each night, I'm going to try to update it with a different link so you guys can download different coloring pages. Uh, know that they're all free to download and print, so I hope that you enjoy them. And my Instagram is also linked in the video's description beside the coloring pages, so make sure you go follow me on Instagram. Yeah, I've always wanted to draw a ape or a gorilla chimpanzee or something like that because I've never drawn one before so this is actually my first time drawing a non-human primate. Um, it's kind of exciting. I really like how it's turning out so far and I think it's going to get better as I color it. Um, it's something I've always wanted to draw just because they're so human-like and I draw humans a lot so I'm very familiar with drawing many of the same features, especially the eyes. So that's why I'm also so excited to draw the eyes first because I just love eyes. And the eyes will be colored brown, so I'm going to be using a mixture of some browns that I typically use. I'll be using dark umber and Tuscan red to color the eyes. I really like the Tuscan red color because it's more than just a brown. It also has a deep red tint to it, so you can add like a bit of a warmer brown and it's really nice, especially for eyes. Like this particular gorilla that I'm looking at, it has a really nice reddish eye color, so Tuscan Red comes in handy there.
Uh, someone asked, what's your longest drawing? And I'm assuming that you mean by like length of time spent to complete the piece. Uh, I don't really know because if drawings get really long, I don't keep track of the time on them. But I would definitely say that it would it'd probably be a painting that I've done in the past. Uh, some paintings that I make, I can spend those hours on end working on it because there's just so many details to paint over, and paint takes a lot longer to complete other uh, over uh, just like a color pencils or ink. I don't know which painting in particular took the longest though, but I can guarantee you that it's a painting. Uh, Sally, this is not from memory. I've never drawn a gorilla before, so I'm using a picture that I found on the internet. Uh, if you just search gorilla, I think lowland gorilla is the specific name for this, but just search that and go to images and you'll find a generic gorilla. And that would be the one I'm drawing. <laughs> So right now the eye, it looks very dark and it doesn't like have that much light in it, but once I add the white acrylic paint for the reflections, the eye is really going to pop and it's going to be really cool, but I'm first going to color the left eye before I do that, so stay with me. <laughs> And again, if you guys have questions, please feel free to ask them. I'll try to answer as many as I can, but do remember that I can't read all of them at once. I only see about five questions at a time, and whenever someone adds a new one, it pushes them back. So I won't be able to see everyone's question. And if your question got missed and you really want it to be answered, then just please ask again. I may get to it. But if I don't, feel free to contact me on Instagram through a direct message, and I'll respond to you there. Oh, Amanda, thanks for telling me that you tagged me in something. I'll have to go check that out later. Um, I don't think that my phone gives me tag notifications, or I guess sometimes whenever people tag me, if I'm giving if I'm giving a live stream and someone sends me a direct message or uh, they tag me in something, I don't get the notification because my phone is currently on Do Not Disturb. So I'll have to go look for that. So again, that's why I also comments, those get hidden quickly within a bunch of other notifications. So if you guys really need to ask me something, that's why I recommend you go to Instagram direct because if you comment a question on my pictures, it's unlikely that I'll see it, especially if it's an older picture, just because like, I don't go back and check every picture that I've posted for comments. There's this little bug here. If you guys see this, I don't, I'm gonna try to get him out. I don't wanna hurt him, but. Okay, he's gone. I honestly thought that that bug was like a black pencil shaving at first. <laughs>
I'm now going to add reflections to the eyes with this white acrylic paint. For you guys who missed the beginning of the video, this is Americano acrylic paint. It's like a dollar at Hobby Lobby, and I think whenever I bought it, they had a 30 cents off sale, so I got it for really cheap. Uh, whenever I add reflections, I don't use expensive paint at all. Well, like in general, I don't use expensive paint. I paint with this stuff, but just any paint will do. Just add little lines and dots to create reflections. And if you got whatever medium you're working in, don't be afraid to mix mediums and try something different. Like, for example, I'm using acrylic paint on top of colored pencil, or if you're using marker, feel free to use colored pencil and paint on top of that because like, the more mediums that you use, it just gives you so much more flexibility to what you can illustrate, and that's something that's really important. Whenever I was first coloring, I would just use markers, like only markers, nothing else, but over time I've learned that using different tools I can accomplish more and like for example if I have a marker drawing with ink if I use colored pencils on top of it I can get in a lot more finer details such as hair strands and things like that so I use a combination of materials and I recommend that you guys play around with that as well because you may discover that you really like the combination of like certain mediums Uh, Brittany, I've never used a white gel pen over colored pencil because I feel like a ballpoint gel pen would have a, a tough time applying the pigment onto the waxy colored pencil. I've had success with white uh, ballpoint pens, like, I, I forgot the brand, I think it's by Sakura. They make a really popular uh, white gel pencil, but uh, that works really well on stuff like ink, but colored pencil I feel like it wouldn't work as well. But like if you're doing ink drawings, go for it. Use white gel pens. They're a lot, a lot of fun and really easy to use. But also know that those it's really hard to get variance with the white transparency on that. You're stuck to just like the, the least transparent white. Whereas with paint, you can vary it, water it down to create different transparencies. I think Prismacolor makes different shades of gray. I only have one though, but it'd be nice to have one that's just a bit darker. I mean, I can make do with this and by blending black into it, but it would be nice to have a darker gray. Yeah, because I think this one's just like, yeah, this is 30% cool gray. I think they have darker ones as well. All I know is that this is the one that I purchased and I also got a duplicate in the set that I got from a friend on Christmas. So that's the only one that I've used.
Uh, Nikita, I'm using Prismacolor colored pencils. They come in a container that looks like this. This is the Prismacolor logo. You can find it at craft stores such as Hobby Lobby and Michaels, but you can also purchase them on Amazon. And I've also learned that you can purchase them at Walmart. I think I saw a set. I forgot how much it was, but I definitely saw a set of Prismacolors with the school supplies. I think it was a 24 set, and I don't recall it being more than $25, so that's a pretty decent deal considering the quality of these pencils. So uh, if you're interested in getting them, I would first recommend that you purchase a couple of them individually. You can do so at craft stores. Whenever you go to where they have their colored pencils, they'll have this little rack with little holes in it and each hole has a different color. So you can pick out a couple of colors there and test them, make sure that you like the colored pencils before you purchase the whole set because for a lot of people it just isn't a preferred medium for them. They don't like using colored pencils, so it'd be a shame if you spent so much money on an entire set. So it's good just to test the waters on it. Uh, unless you're comfortable with colored pencils and you're just looking for better colored pencils, then I would say go for it because these are amazing. But if you're unfamiliar with colored pencils, then I would recommend testing them. This is one of my favorite tips for using Prismacolors. Uh, whenever you want to color a large area and make it more efficient, uh, put your pencil at an angle to where the actual color is touching the paper and push down on the tip because you don't want it to break. Uh, this way you can color a large area at once. It's very efficient and it takes a lot less time. It's a lot better than like coloring like this with a little radius. Instead you have this thick line It'll help you color in spaces faster. But this gray, as you can see, it's a little light for a gorilla, so I'm going to be blending black into it. I'll show you guys how to do that. In my experience, gray has been one of the easiest colors to blend. Like some colors are just really difficult to blend, but I found that gray, like anything you want to blend into it, it's really easy to blend. So, like, that's that's one bonus to doing this. I mean, if I was like doing greens or blues, it, it'd be okay, but it's just different. I feel like the gray is more creamy and it's easier to blend stuff in, but I don't know. It could just be an illusion, but that, in my experience, that, that's how I feel. <laughs> I think after I'm done with this drawing, I'm going to make a gorilla coloring page just like it so you guys could rewatch this video and color along if you'd like, or you can just color for fun. But I've been making coloring pages for a lot of the drawings I've been doing live now, and you can find those coloring pages on Kids Activities blog. The link to it is in the video's description. I linked you guys, um, what was it? Oh yeah, peacocks. Well, one peacock coloring page. So you can go download that and color it for fun. It's a good activity if you want some quiet time or just some reflective thinking while coloring. Put on some music. It'll be a lot of fun for you and your kids.
So, out of all the famous gorillas in the world, which one is your guys' favorite? I think that my favorite is Coco, the signing gorilla that knows sign language. She's so adorable, and I saw some videos of her and her cats. If you guys haven't seen it, I strongly recommend that you look it up. It's just so, like, heartwarming, I guess, to see something that's, like, not quite human since it's a gorilla, like, experience and do things that are just so human. It's just, it's quite an experience to watch, so if you want, you can just look up Coco the Gorilla videos on YouTube. They're a lot of fun to watch. Uh, Tasha, my favorite thing to draw would be people. People, they're my favorite thing to draw. It's just, it's so relatable, I guess, to me. I mean, because I'm a human, obviously, but uh, I just really enjoy drawing the features. It can also be a, the most challenging thing to draw, but I feel like it's also the most rewarding because of that. Um, if you go look at my Instagram, you'll see a lot of the people drawings that I've made. I draw a lot of faces, primarily. Uh, sometimes I draw the body, but the reason why I don't draw the body as much is because uh, the sized canvas and paper that I use, it is small to where if I were to draw the entire body, it'd be really difficult to capture a lot of face details, and I really love drawing the face, so I wouldn't want to miss out on anything. But yeah, go check out my Instagram, you'll see a lot of recent paintings that I've done, and I hope you like them. Uh, Lisa, this is toned gray paper by Strathmore. It's drawing paper. Um, I wouldn't paint on it, honestly. Like, I feel like, like sometimes I use paint on it, but I wouldn't like do the same kind of painting that one would with a canvas because it is just paper that folds easily and water would seep through it. But this is what the cover of it looks like. It comes in a spiral sketchbook, but don't worry because all the pages are perforated, so you could easily tear it out without the annoying little strip of. Uh, I guess holes but you can get this at Hobby Lobby and Michaels. I love this kind of paper for colored pencils and I highly recommend it to those who haven't tried it. Uh, Lisa, I've drawn puppies a few times but I haven't drawn the dogs that I have right now, actually. I think it'd be a fun video for me to draw them sometime, so I'll keep that in mind.
Uh, Maria, I'm referencing a picture because this is the very first gorilla that I've actually drawn, so it's necessary for me to look at a picture. Uh, if you guys are curious as to what the original picture looks like, just go on Google and search, like, gorilla, <laughs> and go to images and you'll find it. It's like one of the first images that comes up. Or if you want to be more specific, it's a lowland gorilla, so, like, Good luck finding it. I'm sure you guys can find it rather easily. Uh, Tiffany, I'm not using a blue right now. I'm using a cool gray colored pencil. It does have a bluish tint to it, or if you see this blue off to the side, this is just a color, or not a color pencil, this is a mechanical pencil, it has no color, it's just the body color for decoration, but again, this is just cool gray, so it's not really blue, but it does have a blue tint. Uh, sometimes whenever I color things, it does look blue on camera, but it's really just gray. Jordan, I've been drawing since middle school. I have taken art classes at my school, but it's not like really instruction based. It's more of just like, here's an art class that gives you time to work on art and use resources that the art teacher provides. Because uh, right now in high school, I take IB art, which is International Baccalaureate. And I have some requirements that I need, like I have to submit so many pieces of art and a workbook. And once I submit this, I can get like an IB score, which is a test grade. If you guys are familiar with how AP works, then you're scored from a 1 to a 5. IB, you're scored from a 1 to a 7 in each class. And IB is a curriculum as a whole, so it's not just a subject in isolation, but uh, the score that I get for art is combined with five other subjects, and that will determine if I get the IB diploma or not. I hope I get it. <laughs> I'm not too worried, honestly, though. Because I, I already took some tests and I got really good scores, so I think I'm on a good track. <laughs> and if you guys don't know, uh, the reason why I went to Colorado last week, what, it was to go to the IB World Conference. So I got to meet IB students from all over the world, and it was a lot of fun. And the topic was from farm to work, from farm to fork, and it, we talked about food ethics, uh, like food sourcing, production, and consumption. And it was really cool to talk to students about these issues and there were also teachers and renowned speakers in the field so it was just a great experience The gorilla has a really interesting nose because it has like all these wrinkles and folds. So there's a lot of dark crevices. So right now that's what these dark lines are for in case you guys are wondering. And, okay, now that I have a large area open, I'll show you guys how I blend colors with each other. Since I desire a darker gray and I don't have the straight up color in a pencil, I, I've already applied my lighter gray, so I'm going to take black and lightly shade over it. I'm not gonna put down too much pressure, but I'm just gonna like dust over it, I guess. And after that, I'm going to come back with the lighter gray and blend it again. And if it's not dark enough, I'll repeat the process until I get the desired color. See the difference that that makes? It's a darker gray now, 
I think I'm going to do it again just to get a darker gray, but it's important that you don't go all the way dark on the first time that you do it because if it's too dark, then you may regret it. But uh, if you're going for a really dark color, like I'd go pretty dark. Uh, you can control how dark the blended color will be by how much pressure you put down on the secondary color, which was black in my case. Uh, and the more that you uh, color over the secondary color with the primary color, which is this gray, it will help uh, blend it more, and it will look less rough. I should have done that before I made these little folds on the nose, though, because all the details are being erased, essentially. <laughs> I know a lot of you guys have asked previously, like, how do you erase a color once you've colored it? Like, especially darker colors. Um, like, really it's difficult to do that with an eraser, but say you have a background planned and you have, like, your color go off to the side. You, if you color over with a lot of pressure on your background color, you'll be able to essentially hide the darker color in it. So there's that, but say you're coloring as something light and you put black over it, it's really hard and like I don't know if you can undo that uh, but just try with different erasers erasers can definitely lighten the color but it won't remove it I'm going to need a new gray color soon maybe whenever I go buy a new one I'll get some darker grays as well Okay, that's dark enough for now. Now I need to redo these details. Uh, Elizabeth, the picture that I'm referencing is on my laptop, which is sitting next to me because I'm using my phone to stream this video right now, so you can't really pull up a picture at the same time. And like, I don't really print photographs to look at and draw, although sometimes like that's really helpful to have a physical photograph in front of you whenever you're trying to draw something, just because like you can, it, it's tangible, and I feel like there's just another dimension to the depth in that, that it's better than a digital image. Uh, I know that my freshman drawing, not drawing class, but my freshman art class, our teacher, he gave us like these drawing exercises and he handed out pictures of Albert Einstein that we could draw and there's just something about drawing from the physical photograph that like made it a lot of fun. There, It was different than drawing from a digital image.
Oops. And this pencil broke. Sharpen it. And for any of you that haven't heard my spiel on uh, pencil sharpeners, uh, just know that like, I, I recommend not purchasing the pencil sharpeners that you can buy with school supplies or uh, office supply stores because those are designed to sharpen your regular wooden pencils that are really inexpensive and they're used just to do like, quick writing or math and things like that. Those aren't really designed for drawing or coloring, in fact. So you need to get a nicer pencil sharpener, especially if you're using Prismacolors, because it's since it, they're so expensive, you don't want to risk a pencil sharpener that is breaking your pencil. And like, it's basically whenever your Prismacolor breaks off some of the pencil part, you're essentially losing money there because like these are kind of expensive, and if your pencil just keeps breaking, that's less that you can use. So I recommend that you get a nice metal pencil sharpener from a craft store. Uh, beware of the ones that you can purchase in sets with other pencils and erasers and things like that because a lot of the time they're thrown in as like a free gift or something just to make the, the purchase like a bigger thing. But uh, buy one on its own and it should be good. But there is a more efficient way of sharpening your Prismacolors and that is by using a blade or an X-Acto knife. So like, if you're younger, I don't recommend that you do that because it can be really dangerous. Get your parents to do it or just use a metal pencil sharpener. But it, it's definitely the most efficient way of sharpening your pencils because it minimizes the waste. Uh, I don't do that on my videos because like this little small space that I'm working in, it'd be kind of difficult to use and plus it takes a bit longer for me. So I just use a quick little metal pencil sharpener. I'll be adding a touch of pink for the small part of the gorilla's tongue that is actually shown. And it will also be blended very dark at the top because of its mouth shadowing over it. Uh, actually, I use Tone Gray Paper by Strathmore. It looks like this in case you want to get it at the craft store. They sell it at Hobby Lobby and Michaels. I always buy it at Hobby Lobby. I know the price tag says $11.99, but whenever I get it, it's always on sale for like $8. Or if you use a, the 40% off coupon, coupon, you can get a similar price. So always go online and check for coupons because you'll save a lot of money when purchasing art supplies that way. Like, I'd never go into Hobby Lobby or Michaels without a coupon. Like, you wouldn't see me there without a coupon. I always have to have the coupon. I mean, craft stores, they already have cheap prices, but the coupon makes things just so much cheaper. Uh, Katie, I use Prismacolor colored pencils. They look like this. You can get them at the same places I mentioned for the paper, which is Hobby Lobby, Michaels, and on Amazon. And they sell them in various packs. Like you can get a 12 pack, I think. You can get 24, uh, 48, and I think they have 72. Yeah, they have 72 as well. 
uh, where you go, the size will vary. Like craft stores will carry the bigger sets, whereas Walmart will carry like the 12 and the 24 set. But those smaller sets are good for people who are just getting introduced to the medium because it's a way to sample them without spending lots of money on a huge set. Because whenever you're starting out with a medium, you don't need every color right away. You just need a few that let you understand how it works and how it blends. So I would get yourself like a couple of blues or maybe just like a black, a gray, a white, and a couple of other colors. And from there, you can learn how to use it. Oh my goodness, this pencil's so short. <laughs> it's already at the price tag. It's Hobby Lobby, they cheap little price tags onto every single uh, like solo pencil that you can buy, so you have to peel that. Excuse me as I spend time trying to peel it off so it can sharpen easier. <laughs> I don't know if I'd be able to finish this picture with the size of a gray pencil. I might have to go out to the store tomorrow and buy a new one and then like finish progress on it. Because it, I don't think I'd be able to finish it in the 15 minutes I have left. So I might be back here tomorrow with the same picture. If I am, I'll have a new gray. If I'm not, then I'll save the gorilla for a time where I get another gray pencil because I really like how this is turning out. But unfortunately, my pencils won't allow me to finish it. Because <laughs> I still have all the hair to color. It'd be so cool to like order that Amazon drone thing and just like have a pencil show up during the video. I think that would be the coolest thing ever. <laughs> Uh, Meredith, I'm using Prismacolor colored pencils. 
Uh, these are high quality colored pencils. You can get them at places like Michael's and Hobby Lobby and even on Amazon. Um, oh, and they also have them at Walmart. But Walmart carries smaller sets of them, like the 12 and 24 packs, whereas craft stores have larger sets. And plus craft stores, you can also buy them individually, so if you want to test out some colors or test out the medium as a whole, then just purchase a few pencils there. Another art supplies thing that would be useful to have right now is a pencil extender. I've seen them before and I actually almost bought one once, but they're like $10 at Hobby Lobby, which is really expensive in my opinion, especially for Hobby Lobby because usually their prices are rather cheap, but I think they're like $10 for a little pencil extender. I don't know. I don't know if it's worth it or not because I could just buy a new pencil for like two bucks, which is a fifth of the price. So I decided not to get it. But if you guys know where to get pencil extenders for cheap, I'm interested. <laughs> uh, Maria, whenever I'm using black and shading over it, I'm using gray. The gray I use to blend the black back into the gray because like I don't want the solid black nor the solid gray so I blend it together.
Uh, Kevin, I don't plan to go over the gorilla with like any shiny coating or whatnot because like when I don't have any uh, shiny coats for pencil drawings, I have a shiny gloss coat that I use for paintings on canvas, but I don't think it would do well on paper because it'd probably warp it. But I might imagine that gorillas have like somewhat of a leathery skin, but like almost like a very thin leather. Just by looking at this picture and studying the folds, it does look somewhat leathery. I mean, I've never touched a gorilla skin or anything, and I'm not an expert on gorillas either, especially gorilla skin, but um, if any of you in the audience like know someone who's a gorilla keeper or something, I think that'd be pretty cool to give us some gorilla facts. <laughs> Uh, Amanda, there's a laptop to my left that has a picture of a gorilla up on it. It's just a random picture of a gor gorilla found off Google Images. It's probably like one of the first ones that you come up if you search gorilla. Um, my phone is placed above this little thing called a shot box right now, and the phone is what's broadcasting this video. So, again, what I use is, it's called a shot box. It's like this little plastic box that pops up, and there's lights on the top, so I can capture a great quality video for you guys. And on the top of the box, there's a little hole that I lay my phone flat above and the camera goes through the hole and it captures what's below it. Uh, Dylan, I don't know what gorilla in particular this is. I just searched uh, gorilla on Google Images and this is one of the first things that came up. It didn't have a name with it. It was just on a website that listed different species of gorillas. But I know it's a lowland gorilla though, so there's that. But as for the gorilla's name, I don't know. So it's 10.29 right now, almost 10.30, so I have to get going. Uh, I really enjoyed coloring this picture for you guys. Uh, this is the first gorilla drawing I've ever made, so it was something that was different. Yeah, I think it's somewhat challenging because a gorilla's face is like very different than a human's, and there's a lot of creases and folds and different shapes, so it takes some adjusting, but I really like doing it, and I'll finish this in a different video for you guys. Hopefully I'll do it tomorrow, depending on like whether or not I can get out to the store to purchase a new colored pencil because like look at this this is so difficult to color with but um, hopefully I can do that like worst case scenario if I can't get a new colored pencil by tomorrow night I'll draw something else and I'll complete this another time but as always thank you guys so much for watching and I love all your comments and answering your questions and whatnot uh, just make sure you go follow me on Instagram if you want to see more of my artwork and you can talk to me on there as well. Um, if you really need to ask me a question, send me a direct message on Instagram and I'll get back with you. Um, oh, also go download and print the coloring pages I link to you guys in the video's description. So I'll see you guys tomorrow, same time, uh, 9.30 p.m. Central. So bye-bye. Hi guys, it's Natalie and I'm back again tonight with the gorilla that I started coloring last night. Uh, since there's so much left to color, I thought I'd finish it in tonight's video, so that's what I'm going to do. I, I was able to get out to the store today, so I bought some new Prismacolors. I got a replacement for my small cool gray. Uh, let me find. This is what it looked like last night. I got a new one because it was really difficult to color with the short one. And I also got a darker gray. This is 50% cool gray, which is up 20% from the previous one. So this one is a bit darker, so it will make the process a little easier. Uh, I got these at Hobby Lobby. You can get them individually. 
at Hobby Lobby and Michaels. It's really convenient whenever like there's one color that you need to replace or if you just want to test a couple of colors. Uh, but for all you guys who don't know yet, or if it's your first time watching, these are Prismacolor colored pencils. I use these for basically all my drawing videos. And I color on Strathmore tone gray paper, which is this paper right here. So let's continue with the Gorilla. I've never used this shade of gray before. Here's a comparison between the two. This is the 30% cool gray, and this is the 50% cool gray. See how much darker it is? It's very helpful. Please excuse my dog in the background. She hears one of the neighbor's dogs barking, so she gets really excited about that. So please ignore her. And for those of you who haven't heard yet, I've been making coloring pages for you guys to download and print for free. I have links to some Peacock coloring pages in the video's description. If you click on that link, it will take you to Kids Activities blog, where all my coloring pages are hosted. And there will be tons more for you guys to download and print in the upcoming future. So keep checking back on there. Again, it's called Kids Activities blog, and the link is in the video's description. So please check that out if you love coloring pages. Again, I apologize for the dog barking. <laughs> There's nothing I can do to stop him. No, I have two dogs and they both barked in this video because they hear a neighbor's dog. So, ignore them. Uh, Trina, that's a good question. Am I, am I going to keep up with the classes once school starts back up? Uh, I'm going to try my best to. Uh, you probably won't see me every night on weekdays because um, it's my senior year of high school and this semester I apply to college, so I'm going to have a lot of work that I need to get finished. So um, like, I'll try my best to keep up with videos. Uh, you'll probably see me on the weekends more because the weekends I have off from school so it'd be a better time but uh, during the school year like I said it will be very very difficult but I will try my best uh, 
I can almost guarantee you that like the last week of October you probably won't see any videos because that's the week before my early application for college is due so it's likely that <laughs> you won't see me but hopefully I'll have all the major components done by then like my essay because I feel like that's what I'll be spending the most time on um, I've already started filling out the common app so far and like a lot of it I filled out already but like the, I think one of the major components that needs to be finished is the essays and like those I want to make sure that they're absolutely perfect in every way so I'm going to spend as much time on those as I can to perfect them. Uh, Whitney, these are Prismacolor colored pencils. They come in a tin that looks like this. You can get them at craft stores such as Hobby Lobby and Michaels, but you can also find them on Amazon. Uh, Sally, as a child, I think I did draw a lot. Uh, I have memories of like drawing lots and lots of cartoon characters whenever I was in elementary school, and I really enjoyed my art classes. Although, like sometimes the teacher wasn't the best, but um, yeah, as a child, I did draw a lot, but I didn't really like really get into drawing until I say late middle school. Uh, before that, it was mostly just like exploring a hobby, but then in middle school, I decided that like drawing was something that I wanted to pursue. So I got really serious about it, and I got like all the nice art supplies, and I practiced a lot, and that's where my skill level was able to expand. Uh, Alicia, I have done drawings with cheaper colored pencils, and I was actually thinking about making a video of like, how to color with Crayola. I mean, you can't get the same result, but I think it's important that people understand that like, you can still make amazing art with cheaper materials as well. So um, I have, I don't have any pieces that I've made. <laughs> uh, I don't think I saved them, but there's a few techniques that I use with Crayolas. But now that I think of it, I do have some drawings in my sketchbook that I've used a couple of Crayolas on, and, well, I mean, like, I used 
a few Crayolas, but that was it. No other pencils. And it looked pretty cool, so I think I'll show you guys some tips and tricks with Crayolas to get the most of them, because I completely understand that these are out of the price range for many. Especially, like, if it if it's something that you haven't tried before, like, it's it's a lot to go out and splurge on a big set of pencils. So I'll definitely like try to squeeze in a video about coloring with Crayolas. I think it'll be really helpful for young children especially because like, young children they can use the same art supplies and look up to something. So stay tuned for a video like that. I'm not sure exactly when I'll do it but I'd like to plan it out and have very specific things that I'm going to draw and color with because uh, I have a few techniques. Uh, one involves alternating between just a couple of colors, like red and blue. Uh, you can create some pretty cool effects that way, but I'll just have to show you guys. Uh, Jada, I don't have a Facebook page with older videos on it, but if you want to see some older videos, go to the videos tab on Quirky Mama's page and scroll down to where you see Drawing with Natalie, and you can watch a bunch of older videos there. If you guys want to see more of my art, please check out my Instagram. The link to that is in the video's description, along with some coloring pages that I created. So go check those out. Uh, Haley, I honestly think that the 48 count prism color is enough for me. Uh, I wouldn't like. I don't really like the idea of more is better, especially whenever it comes to art supplies, because the reality is like. I don't think every person needs like the biggest set of Prismacolors because like honestly the set I probably only use half of my 48 set like the, most of the colors are like very unique like I organized mine to where the top tray has colors that I commonly use which are like browns, grays, whites and whatnot and then the bottom tray the pencils are longer because I use them less but you have like all these different purples and blues and greens and like metallic colors and I don't use those as much. I mean they're nice to have but really you don't need a large set to create amazing pieces. Like personally I would start small and get colors as you need them. I think the 48 set is pretty good. I mean I think you can get by with 24 but I don't know exactly what colors are in the 24 set so I'd imagine that you'd miss out on a lot of really good ones. So. I don't know on know much about like which set I suggest people to get because I haven't purchased every set. I only have the 48 set. And on top of my 48 set, I've purchased a bunch of colors individually, such as grays, blacks, whites, and browns, just because I use them so much. So uh, the the sets know that the colors that you really like, you're going to be buying them separately and the set doesn't contain multiples. And Haley, if you're just starting out with Prismacolors, I would recommend that you first buy a few key colors individually so you don't spend as much money. So that way you can get used to the medium before you invest so much into it. So if you go to Hobby Lobby or Michaels, you can buy colors individually. You'll find these little racks with little holes in them and in each hole is a different color. 
Uh, that way you can purchase a few colors that are really important to you and what you draw. So if you if you draw people a lot, get colors that allow you to draw people's faces. Like, so that means like buy browns and blacks and don't buy like bright purple or green or things like that obviously, but get colors that pertain to the kind of art that you make. And like some, some essential colors are like black, grays, and white. But if you decide that you really like them, then I would recommend moving on to the set wasting anything there because you were probably bound to buy those as duplicates anyways just because you use them so much. So I think that would be the best way to start using Prismacolors since like, you're not investing so much into a large set. That way you can decide if you like Prismacolors or not. But not even just Prismacolors, but color pencils as a medium. And for anyone who's watching that's thinking about getting Prismacolors or getting into colored pencils, uh, I would recommend that you get this kind of paper. It's Strathmore Toned Gray paper. This paper, it's just so much more fun to use colored pencils on this than it is to use white paper because on this paper, light colors such as white, they pop and they don't... Like, if you use white on white paper, you don't see anything, but with this, like, you can see it instantly. Like, the, it's super cool. And the gray just gives you a nice subtle background, which is better than like the, the bright white. Uh, Michelle, uh, I think that Prismacolors are great for anyone that loves to color, uh, but before you dive into the set, I would make sure that you like, go to the craft store and purchase a few colors individually to make sure that you like the medium, so you don't waste some money on a huge investment. So, um, like my, as I was saying earlier, Hobby Lobby and Michaels, you can purchase colors individually. That way you can test it out, make sure you like it before you purchase a huge set. And Michaels and Hobby Lobby, they also have 40% off coupons on their websites, so make sure you go check those out before you go to the store. Alicia, I used to do cartoon and animation like drawings whenever I was a lot younger, but my art focus kind of shifted to the realistic side of things like at the beginning of high school because it was just something that I really enjoyed doing. Um, we ask, oh, like a book or anything like that, that was the second part of your question. Uh, I have published a children's book that was part of like this eighth grade project in science where we had to like describe some something like the seasons. So uh, my lab partner and I, we wrote a book about how the seasons work and they were explained by cartoon characters. So I drew pictures and we have that published. Uh, you can get it on like this website called Lulu, I think, something like that. I'll have to link it another time because I forgot all the details on it, but it was just something that we did for fun at school.
So Amanda, for Prismacolor pencils, I do recommend a somewhat special sharpener, um, but what I mostly recommend is to not purchase the sharpeners that are made for like school pencils and you find them in office supply stores. Uh, I wouldn't use those sharpeners because they're not designed for nicer pencils, so they can be a little bit cheaper in terms of quality since like you're just using regular wooden pencils for those. But since you're using really nice uh, Prismacolor pencils, I would get yourself a better sharpener. Uh, what I recommend is to get a metal sharpener from a craft store. And be careful with the ones that are found within like these huge deluxe drawing sets with like pencils and erasers and all that because usually they're just thrown in as like a free gift but you know, just go to the pencil aisle and look at where all the sharpeners are and like buy yourself a metal pencil sharpener individually but geez sorry about my dog so rude. Okay, anyways, um, the most efficient way of sharpening your Prismacolors is actually to use a blade, such as an X-Acto knife, where you just shave off the wood. Uh, you minimize waste that way, so it's the most efficient. Uh, but if you're a younger viewer, I wouldn't recommend doing that because it can be kind of dangerous, so ask your parents before doing that. Uh, but yeah, that's the most efficient way to do it. On these videos, I just use my metal pencil sharpener because like, having the blade here and the small space, it, it takes a while. and. Since I'm making like a video, I'd prefer just to have this. And if you guys in the comments have like really good suggestions for others in terms of pencil sharpeners, please leave them because I'm sure that tons of people would love to find a good pencil sharpener. And sometimes they can be really hard to find because a lot of them are cheap, they'll break your lead off, and you just waste pencil that way. So if you guys like have the secret to good pencil sharpeners, please tell us. <laughs> This pencil sharpener I got from my ninth grade art teacher. I don't know where he got it, but it's a great pencil sharpener. Uh, Jennifer, that's a good question. Um, I'm actually not looking to go to college for art. I want to major in computer science because there's a lot that I want to learn in that field and it's something that I would be happy with pursuing. Um, like Art is something that I will definitely like continue to do on the side, but I'd prefer to major in something else, which is why I'm choosing computer science because it's something that I really enjoy and I think that it's a huge industry and they need a lot more hands there, so I want to help with that. And I think that applying art to technology is also really important because like, art is just something that's so inherently human. And by having people who are artists and designers on a team that works on like new cutting edge technology, you can make the technology so much more relatable and like, digestible, I guess. So it's just something that I really want to explore. And there's a lot of, in the field that hasn't been discovered yet and there's tons of things to happen and I want to be a part of that.
And for the gorilla's fur, I'll be adding a little bit of brown because the picture that I'm looking at, this gorilla looks like it has a little bit of brown in its hair, so I think it also would look better than just doing black and white the entire way. I think Prismacolor makes a cool gray, and not cool gray, but a warm gray. Uh, I don't know, I haven't seen them yet, but I think I saw them online. Um, if I see them, I'll purchase them because I think that a warm gray color would be awesome right now instead of brown. So if you guys have seen those, let me know. I, I don't think I see them at Hobby Lobby because I look today, but if you guys know where they are, please tell me. <laughs> I don't even know 100% if they do make them. I know that like many other like art supply companies, they make cool and warm gray, like Copic for example, with their markers. So I feel like a warm gray would be very nice considering that like these cool grays can look somewhat blue and that may be an undesired effect for many. Uh, Kia, I find it easier to do human noses since I've had more experience with them. Now, this is the first time that I've drawn a gorilla's nose. Uh, animal noses in general is very broad because like there's dog noses, gorilla noses, all sorts of noses. But human noses are like, pretty standard within like the varieties that are given for humans. But uh, I've, I'm quite confident with drawing them now more than I used to be. Like, it's something that took a lot of practice and since I'm so used to drawing it, I think that I definitely draw them better. <laughs> uh, Caitlin, I do plan on continuing something like this for as long as I can because I really enjoy, like, showing other people, like, how to draw because it, for me, like, drawing is is a source of happiness and it's relaxing so like if I can share it with more people it's fantastic um, like during the school year I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with this like, on the same I, I doubt that I'll be able to stick to the same like five days a week schedule like on weekdays you'll probably see me on weekends more but I'll try my best to make as many videos as possible for you guys Oh, another reminder to all of you guys watching, in case you missed it, I've been making coloring pages for all of you to download and print for free. The link to Peacock coloring pages is in the video's description. It's based off of the Peacock live drawing that I did a couple weeks ago. 
So you guys can go download and print that for free. It's a great activity for you and your kids or whoever loves coloring and animals. So I highly recommend that you do that and Kids Activities blog will be updated with more coloring pages that I'm creating right now, so stay tuned on there. And if you want to see more coloring pages I did apart from the peacocks I linked, if you go to the search bar and just search coloring pages, you'll find a lot. Or I think if you search my name, it will come up with all of my coloring pages.
Uh, Amanda, whenever I'm coloring fur to create more dimension, what I do is I alternate between colors. And I think it works especially well for this gorilla since it has a bunch of different fur colors on it, like browns and grays and whatnot. So it makes layering a little easier since like the gorilla has the colors. So like I, I'm using black, gray, and two different browns right now to accomplish this. Uh, it's something I do on a lot of my animal drawings. I layer the colors. Um, I'd say that since I started making these videos of animals, I've definitely, like, I've increased my ability to color fur, which is really nice because in the past, like, fur has been really bothersome to color. I mean, I, I think it still is since it's, it's very time consuming and it's not, like, as exciting as eyes or anything, but um, I think I'm definitely getting better at it. Um, I'm discovering new tricks on my own as I experiment with it. Uh, who is it? Someone asked, do you use barrel Prismacolors? I don't know like what that means really. Is that an older type of Prismacolor? Cause I, I'm sorry, I don't know what that is. But anyways, I just use Prismacolor Premier, if that means anything. Okay, Jennifer, thanks for clarifying. I'll have to look into those. Um, I've never heard of the name Barrel before. Um, I don't know if that is still the manufacturer. Uh, I'm looking at the back of my container right now, and it says that these are distributed by Stanford brands, so I guess it might have been a change in the distributor for Prismacolor.
Uh, Nicole, I never use both Crayola and Prismacolor together, but, um, oh wait, that's not true actually. Um, in some of my older works that I've made where I've used, uh, ink, like Copic ink, and I've, and then on top of that I would use white Prismacolor and black Prismacolor to get, like, fine highlights and dark shades. And that was at the time where I only had a couple of Prismacolors, so for hair details, like if it was purple or green or something, I would use Crayolas for that, but um, I never blend the two together. Uh, whenever I use them, it's either, like right now, it's usually all Prismacolor or all Crayola, although I use Crayola very rarely. Uh, sometimes I just use it for like quick sketchbook drawings, just to add a quick layer of color where like intricate shading is not necessary. Um, in the past, I've made drawings with Crayola pencil, and I'm thinking about making a video for you guys where I demonstrate how I use Crayola, because like the ways in which I use Crayola is somewhat different than Prismacolor, just because you can't really blend with them. Oops, it looks like the connection uh, went out for a moment there. Sorry about that. If you guys saw that, I just accidentally launched my pencil across the page. <laughs> I can imagine that some of like, my hand movements may look a little strange on the camera. Like Sometimes whenever I wipe away the shavings, it looks like I'm slapping the picture, but really I'm just trying to get rid of the shavings. I try not to blow on it whenever I'm making these videos because I don't want like to blow. I don't want to blow on the camera and make a really sad noise for you guys who have headphones on. So. I try to just keep uh, getting, uh, removing my pencil shavings and such, limited to just wiping it with my hand, although sometimes that can cause the colors to smear together, so um, sometimes it's best to blow on it, otherwise like, I would just use my hand.
just so you go, just, uh, sorry, just so you know, I value all of your guys' suggestions for future drawings because I think some of my drawings actually have been inspired by user comments. Um, it, whenever you mention something, it puts it into my memory of things that I can draw, so sometimes whenever I'm thinking of what I can draw, your idea may come up in my mind. So that's always good. And like, if you have a great idea, please do share it, because who knows, maybe I'll do it. Judy, I used to draw anime whenever I was like in middle school, but I don't anymore. Uh, Nicole, I do, and if you go to my Instagram, you can check out other drawings that I've done. So the link to that is in the video's description, so go check that out.
Uh, Judy, I don't like have a live gallery or anything like that, but I have had my art in a couple of art shows, like in my school district or for my school. Uh, but those are usually up for a month in uh, my hometown, so uh, there's none active right now. But uh, I, on Instagram, I have done some updates on whenever they are up. Like there, I had an art show a couple months ago, I think. But I gave details on that, so if one ever does come up, uh, I'll post it on Instagram, and you guys can check that out. Okay, it's 10.29, almost 10.30, so I have to get going now. But thank you guys so much for watching, and I appreciate all of your lovely comments and suggestions. Um, I'm not, I don't know what I'll do tomorrow, but I do see that a lot of you really want to see an elephant, so I'll definitely consider that, especially since I bought some new gray colors, so it'll be a lot easier to draw. Um, so if you missed the first part of this video, you can check out last night's videos by, uh, video, singular, <laughs> uh, by scrolling down and trying to find it, because I don't think it's been added to a folder or anything yet, but if you want to see older videos, Click on the videos tab on Quirky Mama's page and scroll down until you see Coloring with Natalie and you can watch old videos there. Also, go follow me on Instagram and you can download and print free coloring pages I made for you guys. The link to that is also in the video's description. So please check that out. Uh, bye!